All right, this is a follow-up to my uh, training videos on creating a uh, uh, survival kit. The first kit we did was a two to four week kit. Um, and if you've seen the video, you know what I'm talking about. And uh, as I also said in the video, there were a few pieces I was I had forgotten or uh, hadn't thought of when I was doing the kit. So I added those and updated that kit. And then this video actually is going to go into the other kit design. But let me tell you what the changes that I made in this one. The first one, um, I added some medical gloves, uh, rubber gloves to it. I added another couple pair of uh, uh, heavy wool socks, which you can use in the summertime too. It'll help if you get the right time. It'll uh, help keep your, your feet dry. And additionally, added a... Uh, uh, Voyager Pro, a Cato Voyager Pro radio system, and this system is a pretty nice little unit. It's got uh, temperature, humidity, your clock, alarm clock, uh, weather emergency alert tone, uh, thing that turns on automatically. Um, of course, it's got AM and FM. Um, but what's really unique about it is that it uh, has a, a number of different power sources. Um, it also has an emergency light, and then it also has a reading light that you can turn on and off. To power the thing, you can, it's got built-in battery pack, or you can put AA batteries in it. It can charge by solar, or by hand crank. Um, additionally, it's got outputs and whatnot for USB uh, or an AC input, and you got external speakers and things like that also. And it costs 40 bucks for one of these. And as you can see, it even lights up for nighttime um, stuff. Um, anyway, so I added this to that as well. I also shuffled a few things around. I added, I moved my solar flashlight to this here. I added this onto the back of it. I added a couple more mags, a 5.56, onto the quick ready access pack that I showed you last time and pulled out. It comes right off so you can go when you're in a tactical situation. I moved my compass to here. And then uh, put a sewing kit down here. And the additional changes that I made to the system or to the pack, I include adding a few things that I hadn't thought to add before. Including the gun cleaning fluid. I had the gun, gun cleaning kit and didn't realize I didn't have any oils or fluids. Um, so there's that. We've got salt, pepper, seasonal, and baking soda, hydrogen peroxide, also iso alcohol, and antibacterial soap, and cooking oil. So I've added those all to this pack. Overall, I added about three pounds to this kit, which still keeps us around 45 pounds in total weight. And like I said before, one of the advantages of not packing stuff completely and totally tight is the fact that, you know, I had room to add the extra items in there. Another thing that I added, that's actually, a, uh, I also have a, a 7.62-308 unit, so I added that for myself. But I also had another bar of soap. Um, another person had asked me or had suggested I carry a bar of soap, and I completely forgot that in this pack, there is a bar of soap. Small one, but it is in my, my kit. So I did actually have one in there. Um, and then I got a couple extra bottles if I need them for whatever purposes, whatever reason. Putting in that 
Okay, kit makes that one a little bit tight. But since I prefer my 762 AR, um, this is all I went. And I think that was it for. Oh, and I added a can opener because I forgot to put it. It's just one of those military keychain type can opener systems. All right, so that was the changes to this pack, um, which makes it pretty much complete, ready to go. Um, now on to my, basically my ready kit. This is the one that, oops, this is the one that uh, goes wherever I go. If I'm in the truck or I'm in the car or whatever, motorcycle, it goes with me. Um, there's no, it weighs, well, I guess I could go with it, but it weighs about 25, between 25 and 30 pounds. Um, it has, does not have anywhere near the number of equipment here. This kit is specifically uh, for your vehicle, so that if you get stuck out in a blizzard or, or let's say an EMP hits and you're stranded, um, you know, you can pull this out of your trunk and it'll give you enough food and supplies to let you survive, hopefully to get back to your home or your stash or wherever, wherever it is you need to go. Um, and like I said, with this one, you just keep in mind that it's solely for that type of situation. It's not like this one where you can go out and even set up a base camp if you want, that type of thing. Um, this one, though, is set up to just help you, give you the basics to survive and give you enough food, just as this one did, but it gives you enough food to survive up to a couple of weeks, you know, if you need to. Um, and again, you notice I produce use of external pouches. All right. One of the drawbacks with a system like this is you obviously cannot carry the amount of water or food that I carry in the bigger system. All right. Now with this, again, I have one of the Kaido radios, but this one is a smaller version, but it's still wind up and solar powered. Has many of the same features as its big brother, um, and I, I basically I attach it up on the top so that if I'm walking around, I can just pop the solar panel, and while I'm walking around, it'll keep. Its, work on its charge. All right? And with this pack, I can remove it very simply just by pulling the Velcro tab and taking it off. The other thing with this pack, as you saw with this pack, my ammo was for 9mm and a 5.56 five, uh, AR, which is sitting right here, obviously. With this pack, when I go mobile, um, my weapon that I take along, I don't want to carry this around all the way, so I use my P90. Small compact bullpup, bullpup design. If you were to take this barrel and put it out here, it'd be the exact same length as this, which means this P90 is as accurate and can shoot as far as this weapon easily. Um, the P90 comes with, well, the civilian model comes with 30 round magazines. The, the mine comes with uh, 50 round. Um, mine is also a 5.7 millimeter. Um, normal civilian purchases are 9mm. Um, also comes with holographic sights. So I'm pretty much set up for, you know, anything I need. It stores and it's compact. As you can see, it's pretty small and it's very lightweight. So, you know, I can pull it out of my vehicle and go and have some heavy, heavier firepower if I need to. Additionally, in my vehicle, I carry this. Now when I'm out and about I am concealed carry as well. I have just my concealed carry but I'm not usually wearing, if you remember with this pack I had on a duty belt and a vest which also had additional firearms and ammo and things like that. If I'm out normal day-to-day -day stuff I'm concealed carry and I probably have two magazines but if I've got my vehicle I also have this additional bag that I keep in there and in that I keep a couple of 556 five, mags just in case I happen to have an AR with me or come across one. I've got two additional mags of 9mm and in this case instead of a Ruger I use a Beretta. Um, and this is the Beretta PX4. Uh, kind of holds 17 rounds. 
lightweight, very accurate, very smooth shooting weapon. And along with it I've got a box of 50 and two additional mags as I mentioned. And then some earplugs and a SOG tactical knife. So I've got an additional weapon besides my concealed carry one that will be with me that I can, you know, put in my put in my pocket or wherever I want to put it. Next, I have a water canteen. Like I said, you can't carry as much water on this setup as you can in the bigger setup. So, and to keep weight down as well is you know a factor. So, I went with a standard water canteen. Uh, I don't have a multicam. I have my my ACU digital, but whatever. Um, and in here, what I've done, oh, bug spray, and then. As well, and here I keep two packs of emergency purified water to get me going, to get me started. And then, of course, a, it's a BPH free plastic canteen that I can start, you know, I can dump the water into or whatever. That's my initial water supply right there. And on the sides over here, I've got another pair of socks, gun cleaning kit for my weapon, a, an Aurora fire starter, an Espit stove, which also has. 25 pellets for cooking in it. Some more earplugs, loose ones. Another part of my gun cleaning kit. A couple more items for gun cleaning. A multi tool, along with some wrenches and bits. This is a Winchester, small and compact. Just a cheap Swiss Army knife that's got your tweezers and toothpick and scissors and corkscrew and a bunch of other stuff. As in the other pack, I showed you this little unit that had the compass and the little light in it for lighting up the compass and everything. The whistle and the flint and steel built into it. So I've got one of those in here. And in that pocket, that's it. Let's put all that back. That pretty much fills that one up. And again, you're going to notice with this one, things are a little bit tighter than the other one was just because it's a lot smaller setup. But I needed to get at least the minimum in here to survive a couple of weeks out of the vehicle if you know, something happened. Um, you know. The other thing I have with this is I've got another pouch here. This pouch I, is a take or not take. Um, I have it on here temporarily. It doesn't need to be. Uh, it's got basically it's full of shotgun shells, um, and so it's not a necessary item. I have it on there just in case I happen to have a shotgun with me, you know, because sometimes I'll have my Benelli M4 with me. Um, so that's you know something you can have there in case you come across one, or you can just take that off. It's not needed. It's my preference. Next pack. We have some additional straps. We have a uh, chainsaw, which has also been added to the other one. Some waterproof matches. Snap lights that are 12 hour. Camo tape. Hand warmer or body warmers. Emergency blanket. Battery charger. 
and there's a bunch of batteries in here. I'm not going to pull them all out, but there's a bunch of batteries in here for the flashlights, the radio, the, you know, any of the electronics that I am carrying, just as I showed you in the other setup. Now, in this case, I do not have, I have a battery charger, but it requires 110 volts or a cigarette lighter. That's what this unit is here. Um, but because this is a smaller pack and I don't have the kind of space that I could utilize in the bigger set, I'm not carrying my Gold Zero power pack or, uh, or my uh, solar panel. So in this case, I would have to either come across some electrical power or um, a vehicle that's still got battery power or that it will run somehow, you know, some kind of electrical power to recharge the batteries. But I'm carrying also, even though I didn't pull them out there, I'm carrying uh, four sets of rechargeable batteries for each item that I'm carrying in this pack. So, you know, I do have quite a few batteries, uh, but I also have, like with the radio, I don't need to worry about it because I can recharge it with solar or the crank. And with my flashlights, I'll show you in a little bit what I've got as, an, as a backup for that. Um, it, just in case I can't recharge batteries for these flashlights, this is a tactical light here, which would need some of those batteries. Um, so in case I can't recharge those uh, batteries, then you know I've made plans, which you'll see here as I go through this. This pouch and clothes, my goggles, one pack of quick clots. Another emergency blanket, a single medical cover mask, and this is a waterproof pouch, that's why I didn't put that in the plastic this time. And then there's a built-in, so I can add more stuff for waterproofing if it that needs to be waterproof if possible. Then I have more earplugs. And then I broke down my full emergency first aid kit, rubber gloves, and the entire first aid kit, scissors, bandages, uh, alcohol pads, that type of stuff, medication, is all in this, this uh, pouch here. All right, put that in. Right now I don't have anything in this. But it, I could use it for whatever type thing. There's nothing in there at the moment. All right. Next, we have. Pull this off. All right. Phone rang again. Uh, I'm pulling this off so we can get into here. By the way, I utilize a lot of these clips. I don't know if you've seen them, but they're pretty kick butt. Basically, as you know, a lot of things with mold, you'll thread it through, and then you gotta. Uh, attach it either with a clip or, or a snap or velcro but you can also get these little clips here and basically you know you clip them through and you just push down and clip whatever you want on for quick release but basically a quick release clip you just put them in there pull it up push and snap you know, pretty simple and easy to use all right, in this pocket, we have a set of binoculars, Bushnells again, and when I was talking about if the batteries go low, I carry a emergency flashlight, solar powered and wind up. So worst case scenario. At least I've still got a light. Uh, and I've got a bunch of these in here, just empty canisters for whatever I might need. I use the Altoid cans and a bunch of uh, empty Ziploc freezer bags for extra storage. Back here, we've got 50 foot of paracord, two sets of um, 
bootlaces, and uh, some steel wool. I'll pull that out because that's really tight in there. And then this pocket here, we've got I gotta pull it out to show you the rest of the stuff. Alright. Oh well. Now, 50 foot of paragard. Two wool. Two sets of uh, boot laces, zip ties. And here I've got these little boxes. If you can find them, they're awesome. Not only are they small clip, you know, clip boxes, as you can see, I got a little bit of bullion and some toothpicks in this one, and a military can opener. But the really nice thing about these, they also come with a rubber seal, so they're waterproof, which is awesome. Then, down here, and because this is a waterproof pocket, I've got pepper, so that's why I didn't seal these in their own plastic, because I don't need to in this one. And yes, I know these are spray bottles. I ran out of the regular flat top, just cap top, so I improvised with these because I had them. Um, but it's not like pepper and salt are going to get sprayed through there. Uh, cooking oil and salt. Now in this pack, I don't carry any more because this is, like I said, it's not your main setup. This is for emergency use only. And so weight and space are at a premium in this one. Some people might ask why I'm carrying a whole bunch of salt and pepper, though. And the reason is, one, you can use pepper for a couple different things besides eating. One, you can use it to uh, cover your trail, um, whether from an animal or something else. Um, you can cover your scent. Two, the salt can be used in smaller quantities. You could use it to maybe cure a little bit of fish or game that you caught, a rabbit, squirrel, um, you know, that type of thing. I mean, obviously you can't do a lot, but, you know, I have quite a bit of salt there. So you could use it to cure some meat if you needed to for whatever reason, small quantity. If you're taking a day or two, let's say, to rest and you catch some small game, you can cure the meat a couple days worth with that amount of salt. That one's really tight, so I'm just going to go like this. And I can't go like that. Let's slide this over here. Obviously, in this case, the binocular, I don't absolutely need to have, but if I'm going to be traveling with this kit, you know, because of an emergency and I'm trying to get home or something, having them so that you can see what's ahead of you, danger-wise, is a good thing. Okay, so we've gone through those and those. Next, is the big pack. Yep, get on a piece of plastic. I have additional water. And now we get to the food. And again, I went with all dehydrated, all the taste is water. And each of these packs is multiple meals. So from what I have here, I've got four, eight, twelve. That's one meal. Actually, I think it's one, isn't it? Yeah, this is one meal. So that's 13. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 meals there. Come back to that sack. That's 19 meals there. Then I've got oatmeal, and I think there's 
six in here, six or eight in here of oatmeal. And then I've got a bunch of the two pack, two meal potatoes. So there's six more there. So I've got about 20 meals right there uh, of food. Kleenex. All right. Then in here, I've got another pair of socks. Thought I had another pair sitting on top. Hmm. Underwear. Just a set of tactical knives. Oh, the other pair is in here. Duh. So I have two pair of socks and two pair of underwear wrapped together. No changes of the clothes because again, this is an emergency kit and there's just not enough room or space to carry it all. All right. Another one of those emergency kits. Again, you can't go wrong with these. I got the fishing gear, got all sorts of little tools in them. And then I add to mine, as I did with the bigger pack, I add an additional small knife. And in this, I added a little extra multi tool thing. And it folds right up and fits right in there nicely. This is a portable, this is my small portable cooking kit. Obviously this one I've never used. You got one tin there, another tin there. If you can get your hands on a propane tank, you know, those little Coleman tanks or something, you got a propane stove. So it's a nice little added feature to this setup. But again, I got the S-Fit stove normally that I would be using. That's just a added bonus, basically. And again, like I did with the other pack, I keep a sheet of bounce in all the pockets to keep any rodents out. Keeps, keeps it smelling better, too. All right. Then we've got hygiene kit again. Uh, eating utensils. Antibacterial soap and a bar of soap. And actually, the bar of soap I could probably put in here. Um, I'm not going to worry about it at the moment. And then as an emergency emergency, I've got a pack of six emergency food rations on top of this. All right. Finally, at the bottom is my ammo. And I've got, uh -huh, I'll use I've got 50 more rounds of 9mm down here. Basically the same style I showed you before. And I can carry up to... I've got enough room left down here that I can carry uh, either 100 rounds of 5.56 or I can carry up to 200 rounds of uh, 5.7 millimeter for the FNP90. So it just depends on you know, what I want to carry and how much of it I want to carry. All right, and then I'll just stop right back here. remember how I put this stuff back in there or it won't fit. That's the one thing. You gotta 
Play with it a little bit until you get it to fit without squishing everything. And you just take your time. You know, that's the whole point of setting yourself up and being ready ahead of time. Once you get it down, you know, you'll know right where everything is and you'll be able to easily, you know, take it apart and put it back together. Because especially if you're on the run, you're going to need to be able to pack your stuff up and go pretty damn quick. The most bulky part of it obviously is the food, but as you use up the food, of course, it's not going to be as bulky anymore. Let's put the cup back in first. more of a tight fit here because you don't have as much space in a smaller pack. And the last thing is initially you're going to put all that water in your canteen. Up here are some quick access batteries and earplugs. And then the last part. I have a, oh, well, I forgot to put it in here. Uh, one is a, a large glow stick, but my life straw is not in here. Well, I've got another life straw, and that's what goes in here. And then along with it, another bottle of purification. Uh, water purification drops and one stick of uh, potassium iodide tablets. So those actually go back here. Where they're at at the moment, I'm not sure, but they do go back in there. So anyway, that is the ready pack that you know goes wherever you go in your car or whatever. It's light, but it carries enough gear and equipment that. You know, in a down and out emergency, you can survive, um, make shelter, make fire, fish and hunt, defend yourself. Um, and keep in mind that, you know, if you have extra gear, you know, you could carry another bag if you wanted to um, with additional gear. If you feel like carrying it, additional water, you can put a couple gallons of uh, water in the vehicle and maybe tie on another thermos. Um, you know, there's different things that you can keep in your vehicle to, act, to supplement or add to this if you want to. If that's your own personal discretion. But to maintain around the 25 pound mark, you know, this is what you want to do. Um, and at 25 pounds, I can survive in this at least two weeks easily um, and not overburden myself with a whole bunch of weight. Um, I guess that's it for this one. Uh, see you next time. Other things I carry too that I have forgotten about, which I'm going to go through, because I use I usually carry them either in my vest or secondary to the actual pack. Um, but these are items that you're definitely a couple of them you're going to definitely are must haves. The other ones are nice to have. Uh, first one is this odd looking thing. This is, uh, I think it's like 15 bucks or so. And basically all it is is a very light plastic. It's, a, it's not a, just a standard um, plastic. It's a composite hardened plastic. But basically, without having to add all the weight to your weapon, you get a bipod, you know, and it snaps right onto the barrel of the weapon. All right.
and then we'll put it back up in there. Next, we have GMR for the smaller setup that I did. On the big setup, as you know, in my belt, I carry a standard digital encrypted repeater enabled radio system. Um, for the smaller pack in my vehicle, I keep a couple of GMRS radios that are capable of talking to our repeater as well. Um, but by themselves, have low and high power and can communicate amongst themselves for quite a few miles, pretty nice and clear. Uh, they also have an emergency weather channel on them. Um, keeping a couple of these, so if you're with somebody when the shit hits a fan or whatever, or you come across somebody that you're going to travel with, you can keep in communication with them, you know, relatively easily. Um, these are rechargeables as well, so again, power might be an issue. But that brings us to the other part. In the main pack, if you remember, and I mentioned in the smaller one that I don't have the room to carry the full Goal Zero power kit. Um, However, what I decided is that I am going to carry the smaller solar panel in this kit because I completely forgot about the Guide Plus Goal Zero Power Pack. And the Guide Plus basically has two functions, and it's full of batteries, obviously. It's a, it's a inverter that puts power out. Oops, has a flashlight, obviously. But it puts power out so that you can recharge a number of different... Uh, items if you, and uh, when you have the solar panel you plug it in here and now you've got an inverter with, that's basically you know keeping this charged up but you can also charge your batteries at the same time so I could take these four out and put in four different ones to recharge them if, with the solar panel so I'm actually going to make some room in the smaller pack and go with the guide plus in there so I do have the ability to recharge those batteries um, next, I've got a watch. Now, I've seen a lot of discussion, people talking about different watches. Why would they have a watch? They just want the basic functionality. Personally, I go with a Pathfinder series, which is by, by Casio. And the reason that I go with this series is because of the capability that it has. Now, obviously, it's got your night light and everything on it, but this particular model has an altimeter which can come in handy if you're trying to figure out height and elevation and everything obviously. It has a barometer so you can kind of get an idea what the weather is doing, what your temperature is, your humidity. Um, this has the whole package, humidity, temperature, barometer, the whole nine yards. Um, and then another big, big plus in this particular uh, watch is the compass. I don't know if you can see it. But it's a compass. I mean, it's it's. Uh, I'm inside a building right now, so but it, notice it takes a few seconds and then it starts monitoring your directional stuff like that. And the nice thing about this unit is that it it also has your standard alarms and and everything else. Um, you know, multiple time timers, uh, stopwatch pretty much everything else that everything else has. So um, the nice thing about this Pathfinder though is I don't have to charge it or worry about batteries. This one is charged by movement and solar power. Um, it's basically a solar powered watch. And as long as you've got some light, it'll just perpetually keep the battery charged. Um, there's a little battery indicator down here which would be impossible to see on the camera. Uh, that tells you what your charge is. Um, this thing's been sitting in the dark for about a month now, and hasn't. It, it, it actually has a screensaver, so it actually turns off the display when it's not being moved around, which is kind of unique. Another nice thing to have, depending on the situation, is a small electronic Geiger counter. Now, a couple of scenarios that. I put in the realm of possibility because of my military experience is that uh, we either have a massive solar strike, solar flare that sends, you know, a whole bunch of radiation our way, or we have uh, some people are more inclined to think that, you know, we're going to have a nuclear war. I don't think that'll ever happen. But what could happen is twofold. The first scenario is 
that terrorists get their hands on some portable nukes and they put one in a few of our cities and they let them go. Well, if you're east of those cities or southeast or whatever, depending on the prevailing winds, you could walk right into a radiation plume. The only way you're going to know is if you have something to, to detect it, um, you know, hopefully with your radio and stuff, you're going to find out that that's what happened and you'll be able to take measures to uh, monitor your, your radiation levels. The other scenario is the shit's hit the fan, let's say an MP or uh, whatever, um, major virus or some kind of major event, and uh, all the radiation and nuclear reactors are no longer monitored. Well, they're going to go critical at some point, and you can't bank on fail-safes cutting in and turning them off automatically. Just as we saw with Fukushima, it can happen. Well, again, same thing. If that starts happening and they start running out of control and melting down, you're going to need some way to monitor the radiation so that you can go around or get away from it, whatever. So that's a, not an absolute necessity, but it's a nice have and it's small and lightweight. Finally, the other two units that are necessities that I carry, one is a Fleur Scout. Now, most people probably are not going to have the money to spend on one of these because you're talking about three grand for this model, which is one of the cheapest models we make. However, the payoff in, in uh, combat or in tactical situations, you can't put a dollar amount on this thing. Um, it picks up body heat, excess heat, uh, you name it, it picks it up and unlike a starlight scope, you can't hide from this unless you have very specific tactics that you use, um, specially covered, uh, special uniforms that you can, you know, anti-infrared uniforms and whatnot. Your average person you're going to run into those is not going to be walking around in U.S. military standard garb for anti-infrared uh, use, you know. Uh, military units you run into may, but for the most part, you know, you're going to be able to see anybody in the dark with this thing. It is just if I could show you the picture, I would, um, but a, a heat camera is an absolute necessity for me. Um, and the nice thing about the, the Scout with the setup, I actually have a mount that I can put on my rifle that I can screw this right on the top. Now, I can't use it for obviously shooting because there's no crosshairs, but because of the way I've set up my weapon, I can get a sight picture and then, you know, kind of estimate through the, through the um, rest of my sights, you know. Anyway, FLIR system. This one here, everybody should be able to afford. And if you can't afford a FLIR, at the very least get this. I recently found this thing. When I first saw it advertised, I thought it was a toy. I thought, yeah, what a joke. Less than $100, and I can see in the dark. And I was like, it's got to be, you know, a, a joke, a toy for kids or something. But the more I read and the few reviews that I saw convinced me, well, I'll go ahead and get one and give it a shot. It's basically a starlight scope. But it does not use the photon tube like you find in normal Gen 1, 2, 3, 4 starlight scopes, which means you can have it in the light, you can take it out in the sunlight, and it won't burn the tube out first off. It's got two focus, you know, your your distance focus and your eye focus. It's got an on-off power and it's got a the infrared um, flashlight. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the camera. Um, and basically in testing both in pitch black and outside I was able to easily see not only a hundred yards with this thing but if I used a we have in our location, we have massive infrared spotlights to light up the perimeter, and when those are on, I can see everything. I mean, this thing blew me away. Um, but what even blew me away more is the picture is so crystal clear. It, this puts a better picture than our Gen 2 scopes that we have. You know, we paid a couple of grand for those Gen 2 scopes. They don't hold a candle to this little thing. I was thoroughly impressed, and I can tell you I'd be equipping all of my team with these. 
and I'm probably get myself another one just to have a backup for less than a hundred dollars. It's you know I don't know what they're called other than they've got the name Carson on them. So if I can find a link where I bought the thing, I'll make sure to post that. Um, but this thing is kicked butt. I don't know if a, I can. Let me see if I can get the camera to look through the viewfinder. I accidentally hit the off button on my phone there. I'm going to try and get go through the viewfinder of this uh, unit so that you can get an idea of, this, of the capability of this little starlight. Uh, let's see here. I've turned off all the lights. Now it's not very big, but you can kind of get an idea. It's hard to see. But even with what, dang it, for a second there I get a decent picture and then it, well, at least for a second we had it. It wouldn't reflect so much. Well, you can kind of get an idea with some of this without getting that thing reflection in there. There we go. Well, the camera's the ca it's the camera, not the it's the camera reflecting off the lens is what's causing that. If I could hold steady, you get an idea. I'm in pitch black. Come on, hold steady. But you can kind of get an idea. Look at how, how crystal clear this is. Anyway, you get the idea. That's it.